Here we go. How about that? That something from the late 1700s wow. could captivate today's youth seems as miraculous as the device itself. This elaborate wind-up machine called an automaton, which writes and draws, is in many ways a mystery, even centuries later. The more you watch it, the more you realize how little you actually know. We are winding the spring up. Just like you'd wind up a clock. Yeah. Charles Penniman, the caretaker of this automaton at Philadelphia's Franklin Institute, explains that back when automata were built, trade secrets were common and were lost when the artisan died. This automaton had been damaged in a fire and was in pieces when the museum received it back in 1928. Senior scientist Derek Pitts says it was like putting together a puzzle. Did you know it was an automaton? We had some idea that it was some sort of mechanical, automatic device, but we had no real idea of its true nature until a machinist working here at the Franklin Institute decided to put it all together. Once reassembled, the hands of this remarkable boy machine could be moved by a series of levers, guided by precisely carved grooves in brass discs called cams. Not only could it draw four different pictures, including a Chinese temple and a ship, but it could write poems, one in English, two in French, solving a mystery. It wrote out, essentially, this device was created by Maillard Day. And that told us who the maker was. And from there, we could find out the history of the device. Hundreds of years ago, automata were created by watchmakers, almost as a way to brag and show off their abilities. When clocks were invented and people saw that you can use these mechanics to create a man that could juggle or sing or be on a trapeze, it sort of started th people thinking like, what is life? If something can mimic the act of life, why isn't it itself alive? So this is my draw with all of my uh, Hugo sketches. Author Brian Selznick was fascinated by the device and dreamed up a now famous children's book centered around an automaton. For research, he went to see the one in Philadelphia. I imagined a kid climbing through the garbage and finding one of those broken machines and trying to fix it. And that boy became Hugo, and that's where the whole story really began. Selznick's story became a 500-page tale that doesn't look or read like a typical children's book. Much of it unfolds in a series of pencil and ink drawings that Selznick created in the studio of his Brooklyn apartment. His best-selling book, The Invention of Hugo Cabret... What is that? It's an automaton. ...was turned into the movie Hugo, which earned 11 Oscar nominations. So this is the very first uh, sketch that I had for the metal grate that uh, ended up being built for the movie. In the story, Hugo lives behind the grates of a 1930s Paris train station. He hopes that fixing his automaton will reveal an important message, just as it did with Meyer Days. Have you seen increased interest in automata since the movie, Hugo? Um, yes, we have. Uh, Jerry Ryder maintains this collection of automata at the Morris Museum in New Jersey. And in the late 1700s, it was one of the most fascinating times with the most complex pieces. The museum has around 120 automata from the late 18th and early 19th centuries. And once he starts, he sort of teases the pig with a truffle. Ryder demonstrates one called the pig and the peasant, where everything from the toes of the peasant to the pig's tongue moves. They were adult luxuries meant to be a decorative art in your home, which they still are today with some collectors. The machines were even used by magicians. He's actually been performing the same illusion for uh, just about 100 years now. <laughs> Doesn't get old, huh? Ooh, so he's lost his head. And the head appears. 
In the fantastic world of automaton, Derek Pitts says Meyer Days stands out. There had been a number of automata made, but none of this caliber. This represents the pinnacle of this kind of work. They are rare curiosities to be had, and we're fortunate to have one here. A rare old-fashioned curiosity, finding a modern-day rebirth.